Hi, today we're going to be talking about macromolecules and carbohydrates. The first part of this lecture will be more of a review, and then we'll start getting into the new macromolecule we'll be talking about during this unit, carbohydrates. So the first part we're going to talk about, again, is this is a little bit of a of review. Uh, it's the chemistry of carbon. We talked about carbon last unit um, with lipids, and carbon can basically bond uh, in long chains, and these chains uh, can be single bonds, uh, double bonded, or triple bonded. Uh, if you remember from the lipids, uh, the lipids lecture, the fatty acid chains were carbon chains, and depending on if they had double bonds in the carbon chains, determined what kind of lipid you had. Um, so chemistry, uh, the chemistry of carbon really talks about how versatile uh, the carbon molecule is. Um, it, it basically can make four bonds uh, in pretty much any direction, which, which allows carbon to be these, the backbone of these huge molecules, macromolecules. And we talked about the four macromolecules last unit, and um, you know, if you remember, the, we talked about lipids. Uh, carbohydrates is the one we're going to talk about in this unit, and we still have ahead of us uh, nucleic acids and proteins. The macromolecules um, are giant molecules. Uh, sometimes they're smaller. You know, we're going to talk about disaccharides in this unit, which is a macromolecule made of um, just two monomers. But most of the time, these macromolecules can be thousands and even hundreds of thousands of monomers long. Um, they're formed through polymerization. Remember, polymerization is just the general name for building and breaking down macromolecules. Uh, and it, it, we've talked about two types of polymerizations, um, dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis. Remember that the monomers are the small single units and polymers are the big uh, macromolecule. So polymer is, is just another term for macromolecule. Uh, to build macromolecules, you use a process called dehydration synthesis, and this is where uh, as you bond molecules, the monomers together, you have to remove a hydrogen from one, monomer and a an hydroxide or an OH from the other monomer and then you can form a bond. Um, the hydrogen and the and the hydroxide then form together to form water. So for every bond you make, you make a water molecule. Now when you do the reverse of that, so you actually want to rip these macromolecules apart, which is what our body does on a regular basis when we eat and digest um, these carbohydrates, um, it goes through hydrolysis. And hydrolysis, remember, is, is where you have to take a water molecule, tear it apart, put the hydrogen back in the monomer, put the hydroxide back in the other monomer, and now you can break the bond. This is just another visual, and you've seen this before, of dehydration synthesis. So you've got the monosaccharide, we're going to talk about um, in, this, in, in this slideshow, the monosaccharide here and the monosaccharide here. These are the monomers of a carbohydrate. You can see the hydroxide um, right there, the OH, and the hydrogen right there. And then you have to remove those um, to make the bond here. And when you remove the H and the OH, you get water. Okay, and you can keep doing this. Um, notice that when you have two monomers together, you have a disaccharide. But if you have more than two, we call it a polysaccharide. Okay, and this is specific to carbohydrates. We're going to be getting more into this as we go through this uh, this slideshow. This is a, a picture that of hydrolysis. Um, again, you have to put water back in. And notice this is a bond between these two monomers. So this bond is then broken and we can put the OH back in and the hydrogen back in and now we've got the two monomers and that's hydrolysis. Just to review, we've already said this uh, you know, a couple slides back, but the four macromolecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Um, and these macromolecules uh, are really the, uh, are needed for all life to exist. Um, we've talked about lipids, you know, they're for long-term energy storage. Um, this unit, we're going to talk about carbohydrates, uh, which is really just uh, the, the actual true energy molecule uh, of living things. All right, so carbohydrates, um, the, the name actually means carbon, carbo, carbon, hydrate, which means water. And this is because the ratio of carbon atoms to hydrogen atoms to oxygen atoms is always 1 to 2 to 1. So in other words, you can think of it as CH2O. Okay, and H2O is water, so C is carbon, carbohydrate. Uh, 
Um, for example, glucose is C6H12O6. So notice that's a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. Easy way to identify um, a carbohydrate by name is they usually end in OSE. So glucose, lactose, you may have heard of um, for people who are lactose intolerant. Um, these are all carbohydrates. There are some exceptions. Things like starch and glycogen are also carbohydrates. Um, so you have to be a little bit careful of those. Uh, but for the most part, carbohydrates always end with an os. All right, carbohydrates are called saccharides. Saccharide is the Greek word for sugar. Um, so anytime you talk about sugars, uh, you're talking about carbohydrates. Now, table sugar, obviously when you say the word sugar, is the first thing that pops into mind. Um, but it's not the only carbohydrate. Okay, some things are sugars that you wouldn't consider sugars, like, for example, starch. Uh, most people, when they're eating pasta, don't think it's full of sugar. Well, it is. Starch is a polysaccharide. Now, there are three different types of saccharides. Monosaccharide, mono meaning one. Disaccharide, di meaning two. And polysaccharide, which means many. These are basically um, the... You know, monosaccharides are the building blocks of all the other saccharides, and we're going to kind of get into that. But monosaccharides are for short-term energy, disaccharides are also for short-term energy, and polysaccharides really are for long-term energy. So we're not talking about energy storage anymore. This is talking about direct energy use. Um, a lot of times, uh, you know, people think that... Uh, that lipids, because of the energy storage molecule, we use a lot for, for energy, and that's that's not true. Um, you know, carbohydrates are the uh, the energy um, for your cells. All right, let's talk about monosaccharides. Monosaccharides, you can see the carbon ring structure here. It's just one unit. Okay, just one unit, um, and these are the monomers of all the other uh, saccharides that we're going to talk about. Okay, so monosaccharides, um, the formula is C6H12O6. If you actually counted through here, you'd find six Cs, 12 Hs, and six Os. Um, the examples that you need to know of monosaccharides are glucose, fructose, and galactose. Okay, glucose is, is the main energy source for your cells. Um, it's the most common uh, monosaccharide in, in, in most of the other um, polysaccharides and disaccharides. Uh, fructose is a real common one because um, this is the sugar that we find in fruit, which is where it gets its name fructose. Okay, and then galactose you find in milk. Uh, and it has that last part there, lactose. Um, and, and again, we're going to talk about how these build into the other saccharides. Disaccharides are when you put two monosaccharides together. And of course, to do that, you're going to have to go through the process of dehydration synthesis. Uh, so you're going to create a water. So in a disaccharide, one water is created. Uh, in order for your body to use the monosaccharides, these disaccharides can be split through the process of hydrolysis. Um, one of the things we're going to be talking about in this unit is respiration. And, and, and you know, we always say, you know, we always uh, people always know that... Uh, you know, we need water to survive. Um, the question is, why? Why do we need water to survive? Well, by drinking water, you're providing water to your body so that it can break down its food. Because in order to, remember, to break these disaccharides apart, uh, you need water to break the bond through hydrolysis. Now, the disaccharides that you need to know about are sucrose, which is table sugar. Now, a sucrose is made by combining a glucose and a fructose. Remember that the glucose and the fructose are the monosaccharides. All right, so when you bond them together, you get a disaccharide. Okay, so if you bond a glucose and a fructose together, you get table sugar, sucrose. In order to get lactose, this is milk sugar, and we talked about just a few slides back, lactose intolerant. Some people don't um, ha don't have the ability to break this down. Um, so uh, people who are lactose intolerant actually have to take an enzyme uh, to help them break down the lactose. Now, lactose is made by combining a glucose and a galactose. So those are the two monomers that build the disaccharide lactose. Polysaccharides 
are many monosaccharides together. I know it says three or more here, but most of the time we're talking thousands of monosaccharides bonded together. Uh, remember that the number of water molecules removed is always one less than the total number of monosaccharides combined. So if you're building a polysaccharide that let's say is five monosaccharides together, you'll have made four waters in that process. Uh, most of the time figuring out how many waters is pretty easy, but when you're talking about thousands and thousands of monosaccharides bonded together, it can, can get kind of difficult. So if you can remember this rule, you know, if you've got 2,000 monosaccharides bonded together, um, how many waters are you going to make? Well, you're going to make 1,999. It's always one less um, than the total number of monosaccharides combined. The examples of polysaccharides that you need to know are glycogen, starch, and cellulose. All of these are pretty much chains of glucose. That's all, that's all they're made of. They're just glucose bonded to glucose, bonded to glucose, bonded to glucose, bonded to glucose for thousands of glucoses long. Okay, um, So in terms of remembering how they're built, it's pretty easy. They're made from glucose. Um, but what you have to remember on top of that is where these can be found. Remember, polysaccharides are, are used for long-term energy. Um, in animals, glycogen is made um, in, and stored in the liver and muscles of animals. Okay, so when you eat a lot of carbohydrates, um, your body converts it to glycogen, uh, which is then stored, and when you need this extra energy, um, it can then be released into your bloodstream and, uh, and used by your cells. So when you talk about people who are like running a marathon and they're going to eat a pasta dinner before, you know, maybe a couple days or even the day before their, their marathon, what they're doing um, is they're eating a lot of starch. Starch is the polysaccharide that you find in plants. Okay, so when we eat things like pasta, um, they're very starchy. Potatoes would be another one. Um, your body then converts the starch to glycogen. Okay, so uh, both of these are pretty much the same molecule. They're just in different organisms, glycogen being in animals, starch being in plants. The final polysaccharide you need to know about is cellulose. And cellulose is actually not used for energy. It's used um, for structure. Uh, you find cellulose in the cell walls of plants. Okay, so polysaccharides have kind of an interesting um, second uh, job, and that is in plants they actually provide structure. And this is because they're very long and they can be built in, in, in very big and, and supportive ways um, for the plant. 